During the 2023-24 NFL season, more women were tuning in than ever before. But they weren't just watching the game, they were becoming a part of it. Top players had a female agent, teams with female coaches, networks with TV hosts, and players' wives like Kristen Juszczyk transcended into influencers with her custom NFL apparel, breaking in millions of views and making major changes to the business of the sport. Now, women are preparing to play football in the 2028 Olympics, and Juszczyk just partnered with Gatorade to celebrate women's impact on the game. Today, we're diving into how Yushek and four other women are impacting the sport, all while inspiring women and girls who love and play the game of football. Welcome to FOS Explains. This video is fueled by Gatorade. Before teaming up with Gatorade, Chris and Yushek blew up on social media for making custom game day outfits out of her husband, Kyle Yushek's 49ers jerseys. But when she made this custom Chiefs jacket for Taylor Swift, she went mega viral and things went to a whole other level. A few weeks and over 40 million Instagram views later, more females were watching NFL games than ever before. This boom completely changed the economics around the game, and Juszczyk was at the center of it. Female football fashion soared as Taylor Swift's game day fits became a marketer's dream come true, and searches for custom NFL jackets rose more than 2,000% on eBay after Taylor Swift and Brittany Mahomes rocked Kristen Juszczyk's designs. This led to the NFL signing KJ to an official licensing deal, and female-focused brands to pay for Super Bowl ads for the first time. And now, football's biggest fashion designer has a new drop an exclusive capsule collection in partnership with Gatorade. Kristen is teaming up with Gatorade to inspire the next generation of women in football, from the design studio to the front office and the field. This limited edition capsule drops September 12th on the Gatorade ID platform, and the collection blends Gatorade's historic branding and Kristen's modern flair with her signature patchwork design. Kristen says the collab celebrates the rise of girls and women in sports like football, and she hopes it inspires even more to get involved, as both fans and players. That's why the collection also has nods to flag football, because a huge portion of flag football players are females. And while Yushek is making waves on the sidelines, there's other trailblazers paving the way for women on the field. Deanna Flores went to her first flag football game when she was seven years old. She watched the teams play and her dad asked if she wanted to give it a try. By eight, Deanna was playing against guys and girls up to twice her age. And just a few years later, she joined Mexico's national flag football team at just 16 years old. She was the youngest ever to compete in an international competition and she wanted to play quarterback. But everyone always told her no, calling her too young, too short, or too weak. Over the next nine years, Diana became a fixture of the Mexican national team, and she finally got her chance as QB1. Flores led the team to a gold medal at the 2022 World Games, and they won every single game that year by more than 20 points. Since then, she's become a massive advocate for football at a global level and has been recognized as one of the best in the game. Flores was the offensive coordinator for the AFC in the 2023 NFL Pro Bowl flag football game. She appeared in a commercial during Super Bowl 57, and she just signed her own deal with Gatorade, joining the likes of NFL MVPs. Flores even became the first flag football player, male or female, with artifacts in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In 2023, half a million girls between the ages of 6 and 17 played flag football. The sport will make its Olympic debut in 2028, and through the work that women like Deanna Flores are putting into the sport's growth, that number is sure to go up. But Yushek and Flores aren't the only females playing major roles across the male-dominated sport. Nicole Lynn first decided that she wanted to be an agent after seeing NFL players struggle once their careers ended. She realized the financial advisors that worked with athletes really only worked in portfolio management, taking their money and investing it, but teaching them just about nothing about how to manage their personal finances. So she went back to school to study law, and she spent years climbing up to a role at Clutch Sports. After Jalen Hurts' final game at Alabama, Nicole Lynn says she reached out to him through an Instagram DM. She said, hey, have you picked an agent? If not, I'd love to link. Since then, she's represented a top draft pick in Quinnen Williams, helped Williams and Hurts secure a combined $350 million in contracts, and became Clutch Sports president of football. And now, regardless of gender, race, ethnicity, or any other qualifier, Lynn has become one of the top agents in all of pro sports. 
Jennifer King fell in love with football at five years old. She grew up going to North Carolina a t football games on Saturdays and watching NFL games on Sundays. At one point, she was a police officer and even a basketball coach, but she gave it up to pursue coaching football full time. She started as a coaching intern with the Carolina Panthers, working with the running backs and then the wide receivers. After working her way up the ladder, King became the first black woman to coach in the NFL full time in Washington during the 2021 season. She's now a coveted assistant, well liked by players and continuing to make history in Chicago as the franchise's first female coach in the Bears 104 year history. But during King's games, there's also history being made on the broadcast side. Maria Taylor graduated in 2009 from Georgia where she was a two sport athlete. After a pre-match interview there, she decided she wanted to pursue broadcasting. She got her start as a production assistant for UGA's athletic department. One day, Comcast Sports Southeast called UGA looking for a volleyball analyst, and Taylor's colleagues advocated for her. Eventually, her connections led her to ESPN in 2012. There, she really began paving the way for women covering football. She joined the SEC Network as a sideline football and basketball reporter in 2014. By 2016, she rose the ranks to host of SEC Nation. And a year later, she became the first black woman to co-host College Game Day. And in 2022, she became the first woman to host NBC's Football Night in America, which is among the top primetime shows in the country. Taylor says it's important for young girls at home to see her on TV and be like, yeah, I can do that too. Together, women like Taylor, King, Lynn, Flores, and Juszczyk are pioneering new paths for football as a sport. But whose story did you enjoy the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and make sure to like and subscribe for more on the business of sports.